My name's Kyle. I sing for the band Body Snatcher from Florida. Oh wow. Uh, I was pretty young. My dad showed me uh, bands like Throwdown and Hatebreed and like Madball and stuff when I was pretty young. So that kind of started it out. And then once I got into like middle schoolish, is when I actually like started venturing out and like finding bands. And this was like probably 2000s, I'd say 2007, 2008 probably, is when I started like finding a lot of those bands around that time. And that's what really like hooked me. Oh uh, yeah, I'd consider it a rabbit hole, like as far as like once you find one band and then you go down the whole uh, Spotify list. And back then it was like MySpace where it's like you would click on a band and then they'd have their top eight friends right there. So it's like you would find all these related bands and who they were all friends with. So it's like, that was definitely a rabbit hole. YouTube as well, it's like just you find a couple bands you like and then you'll find 300 bands you like, so. Yeah! Just kidding. Probably per Perseverance, maybe then. I guess probably Perseverance, hey, breed. Why? Because it was aggressive and it was mean and it was way better than anything that I'd heard ever in my life. Because, like, you go from radio music or, like, anything like that to, like, something aggressive and pissed. It, it just, like, changes your dynamic with the way that your brain thinks. You're like, wow, all this other music is not... It doesn't have fucking balls. <laughs> Bad question to ask me because I love old music. I like all the MySpace shit. But I think, I think something that I'm excited about with new music or like new bands is that they're beginning to take old sounds and basically like bring them back, but kind of better, if that makes sense. Like take the elements that were cool back in the day and refreshing them and adding new things to them. And that's what I like personally. I don't like watering down a genre and just doing the same thing over and over again, which is what a lot of bands unfortunately kind of get stuck in. But when you do something new and or something that's old and you refresh it, then it's kind of cool. In my opinion, at least. It gets me excited. Like when I hear a band that sounds like it's from 2005, but they recorded it in 2021, I, I get stoked. I don't know, I'd say that everybody's pretty much like, we're all the same, we all like the same sort of shit. It's not like, like when people click up and stuff, I think it's really dumb. Uh, there's no point to it because we all listen to the same thing. And I feel like when I was younger, that, that was more of a thing. But now that I'm kind of older and wiser and I'm like, not an idiot, I'm like, there's no point in that. Like, we all like the same thing. That's, that's what I've pretty much noticed is that uh, people will click up for whatever reason. And then a couple years later, they'll be like, oh. We all like the same thing, there's no, no point in it, but I don't know, I like a lot of the people that listen to this genre of music. I feel like all kind of grew up the same as far as like interests and stuff, so that's why I feel like a lot of people get along in the genre and also like click up, like I said, but in metal and core or any of the extreme genres, it's, it's like they're kind of like more dedicated, so they they don't necessarily go, Oh well, there's this new there's this new artist, and I'm gonna drop every other artist that I listen to and go listen to this guy. It's it's more so like in metal, uh, they're very dedicated and uh, stick to your guns. You know what I mean? Like you, they kind of stick to what they like, and that's cool. And pop music, it's not really like a a dedicated thing. They just kind of jump ship as soon as something else comes out. You know, be able to do it, like survive doing it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's, a good that's a pretty good question. Uh, I'd say if you want a tour, you got to take yourself seriously because other people notice when you don't take yourself seriously and you're not going to go anywhere if you don't fucking take yourself seriously. Um, which is not to say you don't you can't have fun because obviously it's a fun thing to play music, but um, there's that. And then also you got to be able to make sacrifices to work. You know what I mean? Like you got to... You gotta be able to go, okay, well, I'm leaving my family for a month and a half to go play shows and be cool with that. And you gotta be cool with being able to be fucking constantly like, okay, well, I slept for four hours and then maybe I'll have time to do laundry and then we gotta go to the show. So it's like, you gotta definitely be able to uh, make the sacrifices needed to succeed and tour and stuff like that. But ultimately, like, I don't know, I'd say stay true to yourself and like play what you want to play and take yourself seriously and invest money into what you're doing and you'll you'll get there. Oh, oh, I'll give you one, dude. Holy shit.
Chris couldn't do the tour either. I think it was too short of notice. So we had like a member change and basically it was like, okay, well, too short of notice to have the band that's going to be playing do it. So we got to do fill-ins. So I got fill-ins and then uh, basically what happened was it was a winter tour. So it was snowing. We played a show in, I want to say it was like Indiana or we were going to Illinois. I know we were going to Chicago, I think. I think we came from Indiana or it was Wisconsin. I'm not sure. Um, but what ended up, ended up happening was uh, we were driving and it started snowing while we were driving and it started snowing pretty fast, pretty heavily and we had to get to a gas station that was like a mile away. So we were driving and uh, all the cars started losing like the fucking uh, the grip on the road so everybody was slipping and sliding off the road and the van, we were driving slowly too, we weren't driving like super fast and the dude that was driving at the time. Uh, we are going, going, and then we lost grip on the road, and we started drifting. Like, we're going straight, and we started drifting like this sideways. And he just kind of let it go, which is what, you're not supposed to fight it, because if you fight it, you'll flip. Uh, especially with a trailer, it'll, it'll, you'll fucking die. Um, so he basically let it go, and we were going slow enough to where we, we weren't like flying down the road, you know what I mean? We just kind of like drifted and then we came to a stop because we hit the bank on the side of the road. Super terrifying because when we started drifting, like the van went weightless and, it, and we were like gonna flip. It was very scary. But aside from that, I mean, there's nothing really that's happened that was like, oh my God, we almost died. Like that was like the one story that sticks out to me because it was very frightening. Um, I would probably say 7th or 8th grade, so that, I mean that's like 2000, 2000, the year 2000 probably for me. Um, bands like Where Fear and Weapons Meet until the end, um, Zayo was one that I listened to a lot back then, uh, Martyr AD, uh, I don't know, I just I got into those bands because my older brother was into a lot of that music as well and I was like seventh grade eighth grade when when he was like starting to get into that music so I, I was getting into it as well and then by the time I hit like 14 15 I was playing shows I mean I I went to my first show I started hanging out with kids that went to uh, like heavy shows and everything uh, when I was 11 years old is when I went to my first like heavy show so like 2005 or four ish um, and then I, I fell in love with even the first local band, I don't even remember their name, but they were like a grindcore band. And then uh, I was more into like um, scene stuff, but yeah, at first it was like scene stuff, but probably around 2004, 2005, yeah. Uh, I grew up in New Jersey, I'm like these guys, so we had a really good local scene there. So I'd say probably when I was about 14 in my high school, we had a really good local band and I would just start going to shows with them because that was all we had and then it expanded from there. What's it's exciting me the, the most is how big everything is getting. It's like everything kind of felt like it was going more underground for the last you know eight years and over the course of the past two to three years everything is looking like it's grabbing more traction than it ever has before with this genre. Just, just seeing that Warner Shore got on a tour with a, with a day to remember and bring the horizon is like a massive, massive step for bands like us and like for all core bands in general. Seeing Knock Loose get on tour with Gojira and they, they got that a day to remember tour as well. Like that's 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 huge. That's stuff that you would ne that you would never think would happen. You know, six years ago you wouldn't really see that that often, and lately it's becoming a thing that like that normal people that aren't in the underground scene because of things like Spotify and YouTube are finding out about bands like this and it's really expanding the genre and making it it's turning it into something that's like that's 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 worth it financially that you know that not not that it's about the finances you know what I mean because we would all be doing this whether we're making money or not which we're not really making money but it's it's making it to where it's possible you know it's it, it's 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 growing the scene massively and that's i think that's the biggest thing that's happened for the genre so i think it's been really cool noticing like a lot of younger kids uh on this tour um 
that are coming out to the shows now, which is kind of new. Like, just uh, for for us, we usually have been used to like um, fans around our age, a little bit older. Um, but on this tour, we've been seeing a lot of kids that have never seen us before, and they're all like young. So that's like really cool. Before I was in a band, I was uh, I played baseball and I skateboarded and that was like my life. Basically once I started skateboarding, I stopped playing baseball and then skateboarding was like, that was what I wanted to do. And then my first show ever was at a skate park and my brother was like, learn how to play drums. And then that was ninth grade. So ever since ninth grade, there hasn't been anything else besides play music. I've literally made a living playing music since high school, so. Uh, I was just working regular jobs, just doing regular like at home life stuff before music really um i've been in and out of bands so in between those periods is what i'm referring to i've been playing in bands for the past like 10 to 12 years um in and out but um right now my main priority is just this is this 100 percent this uh just take it as far as it will possibly go really this is it's all that i see really once you've sacrificed so much that you don't have any other choice you know what i mean like i'm i'm, I'm 33 and it's going to be really hard to build another career not that i would want to but you know what i mean i've sacrificed every single dime of my life to being able to play music on tour to you know and, and we don't make a lot of money but if you want to do something you fucking figure it out yep